DC and Marvel Comics have been trying for quite a few years now to become relevant in the YA graphic novel scene. And for the most part, they're striking out. Although when like Scholastic does a Marvel project, it tends to do pretty well. But when Marvel does a YA graphic novel project, it doesn't tend to do well. It's almost like Scholastic knows the target better than Marvel. DC Comics has taken a different approach. For the most part, they've gone out there and tried to hire YA graphic novel writers to come in and create stories within their universe, but they haven't stayed true to the character. They've made a lot of really big changes within that. There have been some successes along the way. The Kami Garcia, Beast Boy, and Raven stuff comes to mind. Primer is an original character for a YA graphic novel, and that one actually has done the best, I think, out of all of them. But for the most part, it's more like I Am Not Starfire and stuff like that. Parents and children are kind of tuned out to DC Comics when it comes to YA graphic novels. And I have the latest example today. Why? Cena Grace has been hired to write a Superman YA graphic novel for DC Comics. The writer for one of the worst comic runs in the modern era, Iceman and Iceman Volume 2. He didn't even pitch this. DC Comics went to him and said, hey, we want you to create a Superman book for kids. Not exactly the choice I would make, and I don't think a lot of parents want to know what Cena Grace has to say to Superman or their kids with this graphic novel. Cena Grace, like, you can't believe this stuff. They know how bad Cena Grace is as a writer. Cena Grace has been writing for DC for a while. Cena Grace can't write at Marvel anymore because he literally burned, like, the bridge over to Marvel and, and laid a bunch of accusations at him. And he was basically just writing a bunch of uh, short stories and anthologies when DC Comics had all those 80th anniversary specials. The one that really comes to my mind is the Green Lantern story. Easily one of the worst stories of the entire year when that was published. And that's Cena Grace. And everything he's done at DC has been terrible. DC Comics know that. Their editorial staff know it. But apparently, ham-fisting messages into stories is what they're looking for in DC YA graphic novels. I wondered why this isn't going to work. Now let's talk about what's going to go into this damn thing. It doesn't sound good. The book looks at a young Clark Kent in high school in Smallville as he grapples with the mortality of his friends and family. Teen isolation and the seductive nature of online subcultures built around hate and anger. It features characters familiar to longtime super fans like Lana Lang, as well as introducing new characters. Written and drawn by Cena Grace, the book promises to be a moving look at the difficulties of growing up and all the pressures and fear that surround that, as well as the joy of taking flight. Here's the problem. It's not going to be a look at the joys of growing up as Superman. You're going to learn what it was like to grow up as Cena Grace. And guess what? That doesn't sound very interesting. And the whole idea of we're going to tackle the seductive nature of subcultures built around hate and anger online is just like a really weird take for Superman. Clark Kent grew up on a farm, like in Smallville, Kansas. Not exactly tech-savvy character in the DC Comics universe. Once again, this is a writer coming in, has a story to tell that's about himself, not about Superman, and then breaks Clark Kent around the story that he needs to tell. It doesn't matter if this story makes sense for Superman, because that's the story he wanted to tell. And apparently DC Comics offered this to him, sight unseen. He went in there, he talks about it in an interview, which I'll go into a little bit more here in a second. He went into DC Comics to pitch a Green Arrow, Black Canary story. And they said, what we'd really like you to do is Superman. Who thinks that way? Who goes, you know what? Cena Grace has one of the worst comic runs of all times. It's completely reviled around the world. I would really like his take on Superman. Like, like where do you come up with this stuff? Only DC Comics could come up with this and think that it was a good idea. This is going to be... Weird Clark Kent talking about incels in MGTOW. There are a lot of things as a parent that I'm concerned about with the internet and my kids. You know, bullying online is absolutely terrible. There are predators online. But you know that won't be addressed at all. Like the real issues with online. This is going to be, he might turn Republican if he finds the wrong forum or something. It's the dark web. <laughs> it's like, God. If you wanted to tell a story like this, there are absolutely characters within the DC Comics universe that kind of makes sense. I would say Damian Wayne might be a character that you could tell a story based on internet subcultures and stuff. He's young, he's modern, and he seems to be tech savvy, right? There's a character that kind of fits your story. But you would actually have to be a good writer, which Cena Grace is not, to be able to fit the pieces around the character and make it a Damian Wayne story and not a Cena Grace story. If you don't believe me, there is an interview with CBR.com. They had a bunch of interviews from San Diego Comic-Con where this was announced. And for the most part, they're not very good. 
I don't know where they found these people to be their interviewers, but they aren't very good at it, in my opinion. I just didn't think they were very fruitful, very substantive, and certainly not very entertaining. I listened to the Cena Grace interview. It was better than some of the other ones. And I'll say this. Cena Grace seems like a nice person. I don't think that there's a hateful vote in Cena Grace's body as far as I can tell, as far as public image. Seems like a nice enough guy. And I think he does probably want to do a good job writing a Superman story. But I don't think he's a good enough writer to know how to write a good Superman story. You know what I'm saying? This is what he said verbatim during his interview with CBR.com. This is a really moving story that speaks to a lot of my experiences in high school when these adult things are happening and you aren't equipped to deal with them. And it turns out your parents aren't equipped either because they're so modern and weird. Does that sound remotely similar to Ma and Pa Kent? Jonathan and Martha Kent, nothing like them whatsoever. They're not so modern and weird. They're simple farmers living in Smallville with big dreams, a great set of principles, morality, and great parents. Are there things out there that they probably don't understand when their son was a kid and stuff? Yeah, I believe there are. But I think they would get that they didn't want Clark Kent to be involved with weird internet subcultures that were going to make him hateful. <laughs> like, It's not a Clark Kent story. It's a seated gray story. That's going to be the underlying problem. There are so many self-insert characters already. And now the writers, and it's not just Cena Grace, you know, uh, Tinny Howard comes to mind, uh, Megan Fitzmartin. There, there's other writers out there that go in there and they don't write stories with the characters who literally have decades upon decades. Superman's got over 80 years of history and characterization on top of that that you can lean into to write your story. But they go in there and they just wipe the slate clean and tell the story that they always wanted to tell without it ever pertaining to the actual character that people are paying to, to see. There are probably people out there that are somewhat interested in Cena Grace's upbringing and what it was like to be in, in high school or whatever. I bet they're numbered in the dozens. Maybe, no, nah, there's no way you get into hundreds when it comes to people that are interested in reading a book like that. So what does he do? He hijacks Superman because DC's too stupid. Uh, don't even get me on, on DC. And then he writes a story about himself saying it's a Superman story. And this keeps happening time and time again. He's also got a quote in there about Lex Luthor, how his Lex Luthor isn't like the other Lex Luthers around the DC Comics universe. He's pretending to be a man's man, and he doesn't want anyone to know he's not a man's man. It's like, I don't think you get, get Lex Luthor, sir. I don't think you understand what makes the character tick, even when he was a teenager. And DC Comics, quite frankly, don't care. They don't care about their characterization. They don't care if Superman makes sense across mediums. They just throw stuff at the wall. It looks like David Zaslav is taking a different approach, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were widespread changes at DC Comics. But these kind of problems, these issues that I'm talking about here and have been talking about for the last three years on the channel aren't going to go away overnight. David Zaslav can do whatever he wants, but they need a culture change. They need good leadership. And they need an idea of what's going to sell and what kind of Superman story people want to read, even with their kids. Nobody wants to read this Superman, the Harvest of You story. I recently found this quote from Cena Grace, and it has nothing to do with Superman. But I do think it's a good insight into Cena Grace is as a creator and what they prioritize when it comes to comic books. This is what Cena Grace said about creating trans hero Dark Vale in the Marvel Comics universe. I kind of been officially quoted as saying Shea Coule, Dax exclamation point, the Vixen and Monet Exchange, who are apparently people, I believe in the RuPaul Drag Race show, were my main go-tos. But honestly, I've just wondered what my sister's friend Jomar would look like as a superhero. Because he was the first gay person that I'd really gotten to know as a kid and had the body of a man who wasn't fit, wasn't fat, which I felt was super important to put on the page. Like, I love me some Naomi Smalls, but I wanted a full-bodied queen. That quote has been out there for years. The people at DC Comics know that. The people at Marvel Comics know that. Cena Grace doesn't care about comic book storytelling. He cares about putting in agendas. And quite frankly, what the YA graphic novel likely is trying to influence your children. There's the, That's the only way I can come away from stuff like this. And DC Comics are just gladly going along with it. As a parent myself, I couldn't, like, in good conscience go out there and be like, you know what? You should look into the DC YA graphic novels. There might be something out there for your kids. I would tell people, I think you should avoid it at all costs. Even Primer, which looks like it was probably pretty good, because you'd never know what DC Comics and their editorial staff, along with the creators, are going to shove in there and try to slip past you as a parent. It's just, it's weird stuff. Why would you hire one of the worst comic writers in the world 
to do a Superman book. By Cena Grace's own admission in that interview, I don't get to write Superman because I'm not qualified enough. I've never sold enough comic books, and I'm not a herald enough creator. Back in the day, if you wanted to write Superman, you had to be one of the best comic book writers in the world. Today, you just have to go in there with an agenda, and DC Comics will kind of go along with it and give you the character and let you do what you want. You don't even have to write Superman. You can just put yourself in Superman's place, and you've got a story. But this has been going on for a while now. DC Comics, Marvel Comics, they're ashamed of their aspirational heroes like a Superman and, and a Captain America because they don't conform to their agenda that they're trying to get across with their comic books and certainly in their YA graphic novels. Definitely check this out. Really good conversation, really good video talking about how ashamed they are and what this is really all about.